Today, we're going to be looking at the aerodynamic effects of a drag reduction device commonly referred to as an air curtain. Now, the first car that I can remember these being heavily marketed on uh, was the Ford Mustang, but now they're on quite a few different cars. This video request originally came from a Patreon supporter. Uh, if you like, you can go over and support me there. I don't have any reward tiers yet, but any support is always appreciated. So in case you haven't seen an air curtain, let's have a quick look at what they look like on a car. So my wife has kindly donated her Kia Picanto for this video. Uh, and these are quite handy because they are a fairly cheap car that happens to have air curtains. And what you can see is that if you look on this part of the bumper, you'll see that this grill through here, the top portion is blanked in, but then as you get around the bottom, there's actually this bypass that shoots straight through to the outside there, underneath there. And you follow that bypass around to the back. You can see that we actually have this whole gap along here where the bypass comes out, just to this face of the tire. You can see it just comes out there. And that is an air curtain. Okay, so now that we've talked about what they are, let's talk a bit about what they do. Now they're widely marketed as a drag reduction device, uh, but let's talk a little bit about what the actual mechanism is behind that. The fact they're not on every road car tells you that the effect isn't that big of a game changer and they are quite a small aerodynamic device. So straight away, my first thought was, let's go for a huge step of this to illustrate the point and then we can do some smaller runs. So I've done four runs, got a baseline run of just the stock car, which is a, a 2015 Ford Mustang. And then I've added this ridiculous uh, external air curtain to it. Um, so I've put this huge air curtain on the outside there. You can see it's massive. Um, and basically it's an in-washing airfoil profile that then blends into the bumper. Um, so that's my biggest step of an air curtain, if you will. And then the other two runs are, I've, I've cut out the fog light and smoothed this area, and one of them runs just with the area smooth and the air curtain blocked off, and the other one runs it smooth and with an actual air curtain ducted the whole way through with a rear exit, much like we saw on our, our Kia Picanto out the front. Now the disclaimer around these results is this is a very simplified car model where we're looking at full flat under tray, uh, so it doesn't have any of the car detailing in there of the real car. Um, obviously my air curtain geometry is not the exact geometry they would have used um, and there's some few other details like the tires are a bit narrower, lots of little bits and pieces. Combine that with the fact that air curtains are something that we're going to play around with with the wakes and the tire wake and the outboard tire wake and we're talking small numbers. Take these CFD numbers with a grain of salt uh, because I think that they are not super indicative of what the real world numbers would be and I think you could end up with some very different numbers in a wind tunnel. Anyway, just for your reference, the giant air curtain earned us about a 2.3% drag reduction against the baseline, which is a pretty decent amount. Uh, and then the, um, the difference between the opened air curtain and the filled in fog light area uh, was around about 0.8%. And I would say that that number is probably within your CFD era and I wouldn't trust it, but I think that this is a big enough geometric device that we can probably say with confidence that we have reduced the car's drag with this. Let's have a look at the mechanism of why the car's drag has gone down. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a top down view of the car. So if I sweep through, that's underneath the car down there. And I sweep through and I'm coming up, we're through the mid portion of the car. Coming up here, this is where the hood's gonna start falling away soon. And you can see that now we're sort of in the roof region there. That's the mirror wake just there. So that should give you a rough idea of what we're looking at. And we're looking at the, the flow velocities around the car. And this is gonna show us what our weight profiles are like around the car. Now, with this particular car, you'll see that we've got a reasonable amount of wake that's coming off the front wheels. Now this, this is something that you see in reality. You often see wake coming off the front wheels, off the front arches, that's pretty standard. If you go along any car that's going down the freeway uh, in the wet, you'll be able to see that with your own eyes. Um, now what we do when we add this outer guide vane, the fat boy there, is, is that we actually pull this wake in significantly. If you look at the difference between there and there, we've massively drawn in the wake on the side. So you can see that we've, we've pulled that wake in and that does have run on effects at the rear in terms of pulling the rear wake in as well. Um, however, rear effects, I wouldn't say you would necessarily put much faith in given the change we're doing, but at the front, 
I would put decent trust that putting this giant winglet here would have this effect on the car in real life. Now, when you work out drag, uh, drag can be thought of as your, your total losses within your wake, as the amount of energy that you're taking out of the air. So if you're reducing the size of your wake, generally speaking, you are decreasing your drag. There are certain conditions where that is not true, but generally speaking, decreasing the wake size is going to decrease the amount of drag you have. So straight away, we can see that by adding these veins on the sides, the really big ones, we have reduced our wake, therefore we're gonna see a drag reduction on the car. Now, the next thing that's actually quite an interesting effect of these particular veins is, is that the, the vein itself generates a not insignificant amount of forward thrust, which sounds a little bit ridiculous at first, um, but then when you think about it a bit more, it's not so crazy. Um, when you look at the difference between these two, two images here, you can see that adding the vein increases the pressure on the front of the car around the grill because we're basically um, providing a sort of blockage for the air where we're gonna increase the pressure on the pressure side of, of these um, airfoils here. A and that is gonna cause a pressure increase at the front which will cause more drag on the actual car body. But then the whole side of the vein there uh, is seeing suction because it's basically pulling the air inwards uh, and therefore the vein itself sees a net forward thrust. Now this thrust in this particular configuration is around about six points, um, which is quite a lot of thrust, especially when you consider that the whole car has only around sort of 70 points of drag on it. You can see that that's around 10% of the overall car drag uh, is actually being negated by the thrust from these particular veins. So that's quite an interesting thing. So obviously we're gaining drag on the grill and we're losing drag um, by the thrust on these veins. And this is an effect that I have seen happen in the wind tunnel where you go and put a vein like this and get forward thrust on the vein. Um, so not super surprised to see that CFD is showing that. Now, if we take this effect and then we scale it down, cut it into the bumper, shrink it all in, you can see that we're, we've got basically the structure that is an air curtain here. So now let's look at the two different air curtain geometries and see what the difference is that's going on there. So right now what I've got up is the, the geometries with um, the blocked uh, fog light area with the smoothed out no fog light wake there. And then I've also gone through and done the cut through like I showed before. Uh, now you'll have to forgive the fact that the whole car is, is colored as well because I got a little bit of a mesh leak going on when I cut these, these vents in, but it, it doesn't look like it's affected the result at all to me. So let's just have a look at what's happened. Again, if you have a look here, you can see that as we flick between these two cases, so this case being with the air curtain fitted to the car, you can see on a much smaller scale down the bottom here, we have the, the air curtain fitted there as bypass duct and then have it filled in there. And you can see that when you look at the difference between the two, yet again, we are ending up with the wake shift on the front wheel, where you can see that no air curtain means the wake's further outboard and having the air curtain brings the wake a little bit further inboard around the tire. Now, in the case of the air curtain, as opposed to the ridiculous external vein, we do have another thing at play, which is that what we're actually doing is bleeding a bit of air off from the front bumper area earlier. So effectively narrowing that bumper area. When you go and have a look at the static pressure around the front of the bumper, you'll see that what we're doing is that when we introduce the air curtain, we are actually reducing the pressure around the front of the bumper there. It's only very subtle, uh, but we are getting a pressure reduction around there. And that means that we are actually decreasing the drag to an extent on the bumper by allowing this bypass air through. And another thing that we've got going on is that we're also bleeding off some of the boundary layer on the outer portion of the bumper uh, where you could end up with spill flow around some vents or, or other style detailing and stuff like that. Um, and th that particular boundary layer that we're bleeding off is going to help the boundary layer thickness coming around the edge of, of the bumper, the far outboard edge, and that will also help with your wake further downstream. So you can see that there's multiple benefits there. Of course, it's a much smaller device uh, and the percentage difference in terms of drag between these two different types, like I mentioned earlier, is only 0.8%, which is not super trustworthy in CFD and could go either way in the tunnel. And it's worth noting that when you look at a Ford Mustang, uh, they actually either choose to block up the vents or leave them open, uh, depending on what width wheels you have spec from the factory which tells you that it's quite specific as to where the tire placement is in addition to um, 
what's actually going on with the air curtain. So from all this, you can see it's fairly sensitive and it's fairly small differential we're talking here. We're talking quite small amounts. Um, but overall, the theory is, is that it's a drag reduction device. We can use it to better control the front wheel wake and the wakes going alongside the car. And in very extreme circumstances, we can gain a bit of local thrust from the vane itself. So that's a summary of what air curtains do. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and leave a comment below on what you'd like to see next. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.